I've jumped over to InDesign. I want to show you how to walk through all the steps to create our two examples. I'm going to start with our four panel gate fate fold brochure, which was the first example in the videos. I'm going to actually show you two ways to create it in InDesign. The reason that I showed you the process in the lecture is that if you can identify a process, you can follow that every single time and you will never be wrong when you're creating your documents. However, I do want to point out that there's actually a couple different ways that you can approach creating brochures. I would say there's probably three ways and maybe if I have time in the next video I will show you the third way as well. But I do want to show you the two options. So we're going to start with the option or the process that we followed in the lecture. So in the lecture we are to create an InDesign document that has the correct number of core pages for our design. And in the lecture we decided that we had a four page brochure that has a fold out panel on the front and the back of those four core pages. So we create a four page document in, in InDesign. I create a document that's four pages, facing pages. It has standard margins, bleeds, whatever you want for your project. And I made sure it had facing pages. Now once I have the core of the book established, I'm going to add one page four times until we have enough pages to account for the extra panels. We have two extra panels, so we'll have four extra pages. You can turn page shuffling on, let me zoom in here, uh, by hitting the option fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the pages panel and then I want to uncheck or unselect allow document pages to shuffle and while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and turn the shuffling for the spread off. I'm always going to work my way back to front and so in my four page core I establish that I need to have a fold out page off of the left side of page four, the right side of page three, the left side of page two, and the right side of page one as per the diagram that I drew in the lecture and if you need reference for that go back a few videos until you find that picture. So I'm going to work my way backwards. I'm always going to grab the last page in the document and I'm going to work with page four and then three and then two and then one. So to drag and drop, you're going to drag. And then the only difficulty in this is you need to make sure that when you get close to page four, you don't want to see a vertical line. You want to drag closer until you see a C-shaped bracket. And then you can drop and it will let go. Now this is the reason that we have to work backwards. My new page four is the page that I just dropped. And the page that I was just attaching to that was page four is now page five. You can't prevent that at the status that we're at right now and so working backwards will prevent any confusion. So now I'll grab the new page 8 which is whatever the last page in the document is and drag it and attach it to the right hand side of page 3 and then we can repeat that by attaching to the left hand side of page 2 and then the right hand side of page 1. Now I want to show you how to do the same thing but in a different way. So this this approach works. We have our 8 pages. We can identify the page numbers etc. I am going to undo until I get back to my four page core and when we created the four page core I said one of the processes was or one of the steps in the process was to identify where your spine was going to be. Let me jump back to the lecture so I can show this to you. So in the lecture we said the first thing you have to do is you need to figure out how many core pages you have and then the second thing you do is establish where the spine is and when you're making a book it's really easy to figure out where the spine is. It's right down the middle of all of the pages so you have a right and a left hand page. But if we go back all the way to the beginning of our lecture you'll see that we have a folding brochure that has four pages and we've established the middle as being where the spine is and I just did that in air quotes because there's no spine because we're not binding this book. So I don't have to establish the spine as being right here. I could say the spine is all the way on the left hand side and then I only have a two page signature. I have a front and a back and I have three panels folding off of that. I can follow the same process to establish what the layout would be if I have a two page signature which is is kind of an oxymoron in this case and then I could establish that my spine is right here or right here. And when you do that the process is the same but you'll get a different look in InDesign. And what will happen is you'll end up still figuring out that you need, so let's delete these pages here. So you'll figure out that you have a two page air quote signature and that you need three extra panels folding off of the sides. The process 
it just repeats itself, right? So we need three extra panels, so we need six extra pages. So I'm going to add six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six. I end up with eight pages. Because we're making the same document, we should expect to have eight pages. But this time, when you go and turn your page shuffling off, when you start to drag and drop, what you're going to notice is that you need three extra panels to the left of page two. So you can repeat our process of dragging and dropping from the bottom. And then, oops, I did too many, you'll need three extra panels off of the right of page one. And this, let me zoom in here, is just another, it goes here, this is just another version or another option for your layout for your folding brochure. If you find it easier to have a front and back kind of a flip or brochure and have all of the fold out panels go to the right and all the fold out panels go to the left, then this is a perfectly acceptable layout for a gatefold brochure.